week, Weekly Review is on a visit to a bolt factory. That's why we're looking at a nut threading machine. Screwy, isn't it? Here's putting heads on bolts. Try throwing red hot metal past your right shoulder with your left hand. Even a side drummer in the Air Force band couldn't do it as neatly as that. And here are a couple of half inch bolts. This one is made to the old standard. The other, equally strong, is made to the new standard we have now adopted in New Zealand. The new head is a little smaller than the old. Adopting the new standard meant grinding new dies from special steel in the factory tool room. But with the new standard, the dies last longer. Dies for the shank of the boat. And dies to mold the head. Here are the 20-foot steel rods from which the bolts are made. The rods go one by one into a long oven to be heated, ready for shaping and cutting. At the other end of the oven, the rods are pulled out and fed into the machine. Rollers pull it in a bolt length at a time and red-hot bolts drop down onto a metal endless belt at the rate of 100 a minute from this machine alone. For every bolt, the new standard saved just one half inch of metal thanks to the smaller head. The great machine runs on for two 10-hour shifts a day. An average day's output from this factory is 30,000 bolts for New Zealand and for export. Each day, the small alteration in the size of the bolt head saves over 1,200 feet of imported steel rod in this one New Zealand factory. These North Auckland girl guides are out on patrol looking for lycopodium powder. There's some, they found it. Perhaps we'll see what it is. Out come scissors and paper bags, and they start snipping the cones off a giant club moss. The powder is the spores of this wolf's claw moss, lycopodium. It is one of the curious substances we use to import, although there's plenty in the country. What's the good of it? It's used for making up pills, for powdering babies. Now it has a new use in vulcanizing rubber. This is a strange sort of obstacle race because the game is to arrive at the winning post all together. The whole field neck and neck and the race is not just for athletes, it's for everybody. Every soldier must have speed and staying power. Athletics for infantrymen, we might say, and no sitting on the tank barriers. They thread their way through and double on to the next item. Altogether, they come up to the firing point and get onto their targets. Meanwhile, the second wave comes onto the home stretch, and the third is in the petrified forest. Up they come, the third wave of attack, fit and ready for anything that breaks. <laughs> 